Hey there friends and welcome to my gameplay video for the demo of Trinity Archetype. I'm Icon and this is version 0.12 of this wonderful little game that has been released during the Steam Next Fest. So we're going to go through the content that the demo has to offer. Trinity Archetype is a turn-based, well, combat game I would, rather, I would call it right now. And it follows the footsteps of several known games, but does wind up the genre out in a way that I really, really appreciate it, and I want to share you why. So the map that we see here is some method that we already might have seen in a game or two. So we kept to decide which nodes we take. There's elite enemies, event squares, rest squares, and... If you ever played Slay the Spire, you might be already accustomed to this kind of progression system. I do like it because it does give you the ability to plan forward and set for distinct paths. I really do like that. Gameplay-wise, Trinity Archetype gives you control over a party of people. So we have a tank, a mage and a fighter available. and. Everything else I want to explain during the gameplay. So we get to start at one of these nodes. I really don't mind which one I'll take. We just get in there. So what we're seeing here is very similar to games that I've played before, but I really, really like the unique takes Trinity Archetype has. So first off, I want to talk about these little dots down here. That's boost points. Every skill that you can cast can be boosted for extra effects. We have here our action points reflecting the costs of these skills and as you see here every character has his own set of skills and the action point pool is shared. We have hit points on our characters and we have different effects on these skills there. Everything is already pretty nicely detailed and readable. I like that for such an early version and yeah so we see over here what our enemy is up to attacking our tank for five damage so we're going over to our tank and we're going to invest our first our first action points this turn to just shield ourselves and let's get over to these boosting points as you see here we still have two points left i'm going to pick up my fighter and i'm going to boost this uh, skill here so once it's boosted it will enable according to the amount of boost points we've invested new sets of the skill. So in this scenario we deal 4 damage and 2 extra piercing damage. Piercing damage goes through shields and well in this case I'm doing it mostly for the extra damage. So we still have one ability point left. Well I could have used that might beforehand but since I derped out that one we're going to head over to our mage dude and just we're going to we're just going to attack. I'm going to enhance the attack to apply this uh, boost point seal to show you what you can do here. So this guy does not gain boost points anymore at the beginning of his turn. So that's good because your enemies have the same mechanics as you do. So at the end of our turn we get to block this dude, no biggie. And here we now see the next attack is aimed towards our maged guy. So sadly we don't have any block skills on him so we're going to see how we're going to resolve this one thing worth mentioning here as you see these two guys used their boost points last turn and they didn't regenerate any so you either decide to regenerate boost points or you use them and you don't regenerate any this is a pretty nifty system to make sure that you always think about whether to use your your boost points or to stack them up also, each character has an inspiration skill. So at the beginning of the fight, our tank did, uh, did the inspiration effect automatically. And you see here, every, of, every one of our people here has now a shield gain when they attack. If we would now go for the inspiration another time on our tank and uh, boost it with those boost points, we would get these extra effects here. So shields are halved instead of destroyed at the beginning of the turn. We gain fortified, people gain more shield, and whenever we attack, our people gain shield. So let's try that. Let's enhance the inspirational skill there. I hope that's uh, working out. Well, it 
doesn't write now as it seems I need to change the inspiration. Okay. Sadly, because I would have loved to upgrade that. So we can now either break um, boost points from our enemies if we get, if we let our mage uh, do the inspiration, or we add piercing damage if we let our fighter do the inspiration. Inspiring is a free action once per turn or once per battle. I can't remember uh, exactly anymore, but you get the idea. So we're going to apply the battle cry here before we do anything and I'm pretty sure but I want to try it out nevertheless we're going to see yeah we can apply these shield points also to an ally which is in this scenario a pretty nifty thing so I'm going to boost then the attack skill of my tank to make sure he's going to execute the skill twice there we go not too much impact but the enemy is slowly going down here we go and now I'd say we should be capable of taking that duty down. So let's see. Mind Bloom applies focus. Focus is a special resource for the mage. He's uh, exclusively using that. So we're going to use Battle Cry. And I'll just spam out all the attacks that we got. Pretty sure this will be enough to take down our enemy. There we go. So at the end of this battle, we get to choose who we're going to level up. I want to level up the fighter and we see here every character has hit points, strength, guard which uh, influences the shield gain and special which well increases other cards so or, or skills I should rather say. So we have a uh, stat system which influences our skills which is something I do like. So now we get to decide whether we take a piercing attack or a hybrid skill which is going for damage and shield gain so i'm going to go for the piercing attack and we also gain some extra hit points there we go also runes yeah runes are fun runes are things you can just uh tag onto your skills and uh, mo modify them with that so rune of punishment punished units take all right, whenever, okay, so punishment is an extra damage counter that uh, deals damage whenever the target gets hit again, which is good for lots of small attacks. We deplenish this resource by either hurting our enemy or ending the turn. I do like that. So what do we have here? We have two punishment runes, so, well, I'd say we're going to use the punishment runes on the attack skill of our tank. There we go. And we can also equip and unequip them as we, uh, as we want to. Something I do really like. And, or is it fixed now? No, we can, we can swap that. Okay, let's get over there to our next fight. Okay, so what's happening there? Just things that cross my mind here. I must check out it whether or not I can decide who's going to do the inspiration automatically. Okay, so right now, what does this guy do? He tends to power up their allies, I see. And an attack with negative influences. So we're going to go for the protection skill here and one attack there. So it seems like the punishing effect didn't uh, apply there. Oh no. Ah, I see. To apply the punishing effects, I will need to uh, to boost the skill. All right. That's that. So, well, we're going to try out what focus does for us. I have no clue yet. But I wanted to try it out nevertheless. Okay, let's end the turn. So in its basics, this game does everything we already know uh, of games like these. But I do like the extra quirks of the boost points and the inspiration skills because that does add in extremely more an extremely deeper layer of strategizing. So we're going to yeah let's give the uh, leadership over to to our fighter we're going to double boost that there we go and now we're going to double boost also the attack skill of this guy 
There we go. Punish is totally annihilating him. Wonderful. And another fun thing here is that our attacks triggered now two times due to the inspiration skill of our fighter. I do like that. Okay, we're going to level up the tank here. And this is a very similar procedure. Okay, here we see each skill has a different unlock of uh, stats there. Vulnerability. So take more damage. Okay, that's a debuff. Preparations. Okay, shield generator and fortification. I want to have my tank on tanking duty as uh, delightful this might have been though. Okay, ah yeah, here we see on which boost level these runes actually do trigger. Okay, now I, now I get it. So I haven't fully figured out what focus is good for, but we're going to find out. So rune of power plus 30% damage. Let's apply that to the piercing attack. And let's say focus. Well, I'll put that on Mind Bloom so we'll gain even more focus if we do so. And fortify is more shield gain. Okay. I don't want to apply that right now. Okay, first event. You stumble upon an odd rock formation, alluring yet dangerous looking. Yeah, I want to have that. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we're going to try it out nevertheless. Come on, give me the rune. So, what's that? Execute skill plus one times. That was definitely worth it. It's a pretty nifty bonus there. And obviously damage does stick between battles. I just uh, have managed to not die yet. <laughs> or not get damaged once. So we're going to apply that to the attack there for now. What I really do like already is the fact that I can re-equip and reallocate the the runes however I like. I don't know if that's uh, actually not too strong, but we're going to check that out. So now there's uh, there's a spread on my uh, on these attacks. So let's see. Apply fortify. So this is the first time that I don't think that I'll be able to avoid damage completely. So. Let's protect our mage, because I feel like he's the... His HP are the the most valuable to protect. And we're also going to apply the punishment on this dude, because I intend to attack him one more time. And here we see I can execute the attack to an additional time, which does deal a lot more damage there. And okay, I actually managed to avoid all the damage by killing the enemy. Yeah, the punishment is pretty strong. I don't know if I... if I estimated it correctly. I really thought that it would do less than that. Okay, we're going to smack some protection on our warrior. And, well... The attack of our mage is rather low at this point. Okay. Ah. My dude is punished, but that's okay. So we're going to we're going to do this like that. This worked pretty good on our last enemy already, so never change your running system. There we go. Like I said, though so hindering destroys boost points of our enemies and dissuasion boost level to target. What's that? Increases or decreases the skill's effectiveness. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go for the hindering, I like that. What do we have here? Plus shield, plus might, okay. And we get to rest up. So. Let's go for a random favor, I wanna see what that's uh, going to be. Ah, okay. So my party has regen for two battles, okay. We can't keep that. All right, elite enemy fight. I wanted to check that out for once too. So this looks like we're uh, against an AOE here. 
and that dude, well, we're just going to destroy this enemy here just like we did it the last time. Combo of punishment and extra attacks. Oh, oh, that's a neat one. That's what I, that's something I like to see. So the second attack of my fighter that couldn't connect to the enemy there was instead spread to the other enemy. That's a really nice move. Not too many games are or that generous. Okay, we're just going to attack here because we gain shields out of those attacks. Well, we only gain shields out of the attack skills though, so sadly there's not much I can do right now. So is there any cool one action point skill left? Yeah. I should have uh, done that differently. Oh, well, there. Okay, so here we saw the futility of my uh, of my doings, because this was a piercing attack. You can't do anything against piercing attacks, as it seems, but that's totally okay. Alright. What's the inspiration of a mage, though? Apply regen. Okay, caster's skills will affect target's party. Okay. Let's see how preparations does work. I really want to uh, try out a couple of these skills here a little bit more thoroughly because, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening there. So the dude has thorns. Okay. Thorns deals piercing damage and gets half whenever it triggers. Alright, got it. So, let's apply some punishment to that dude. I like that. And, well, this time I'm going to do just what I wanted to do the last time. Applying Might beforehand. There we go. Okay, let's go for the warrior again. Annoyance. Gain critical equal to annoyance stack when attacked. Okay, I don't know what critical is, but... Punishment. Oh, direct application of punishment. I see, I see. Well, I want to try out what the annoyance does because I'm curious. And applying weakness and more annoyance. Okay. Okay, I can't uh, boost that because it's already doing the same thing. I see. All right. Then we're going to put some weakness on the annoyance as well. And beyond that, well, it doesn't seem to make too much sense. Ah, uh, well, I could uh, be, I would be happy if the rewards for an elite fight would be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more just, but doesn't, uh, that's just something I noticed here. So, the tree yields rare runes. Okay, we're we're going to okay. So I'll either take a chance, take a chance to get a curse or a damage for getting greedy. Yeah, let's be greedy. Okay, we're being cursed. So let's check out what the curse does. Apply might. Okay. So what kind of curse do we have? Alright, we're starting out weak in the next fights. I want to try out whether or not the Might does work for preparations, because that would be pretty sick. The rune system is also pretty neat, although I must say I would prefer a system which has a more, uh, more definite uh, impact, like being able to swap them back and forth sounds like a cool thing, but I prefer if these uh, if these were real decisions that I have to take. In return, the runes could be a little bit stronger, I don't know. But this amount of flexibility just feels uh, almost a little bit too much. But that's just my first impression. Okay, so they want to debuff me, they want to buff up themselves, and they want to deal a little bit of damage to my mage. Okay, so let's see. Alright, gain critical equal to annoyance when attacked. Okay. Since my dude doesn't get attacked right now, 
First, we're going to apply some shield, and let's go for a battle cry. And let's see. Yeah, let's go for for an attack on this guy. Oh yeah, I do like this that extra attacks don't get lost. This is a real nice thing. All right, let's go. So there's uh, there's a lot of damage incoming, considering that we got punishment on us. Okay then. Ow. We're going to smack that dude here. Because I don't want him to wound my, my mage. It's for me the most important thing that my mage doesn't get any damage in there. Okay, so piercing attack. We don't need that. We can go for a regular attack. So, I haven't fully understood yet what focus does. But somehow, I think his basic attacks will be a lot stronger when he's focused, so let's try that out. Regen is pretty cool to have, gotta say. So, well, deal damage equal to focus, but that will require yet another big boost there. Oh, dang, okay. I misplayed that probably a wee bit. So, let's see, wasn't there some way of generating punishment on my on my enemies didn't i have somebody no i decided to go for the other skill that's why so tank is supposed to take 10 damage i strongly disagree wow okay that's gonna be okay now Let's level up the tank. Taunt. Become unit's intended target. Oh yeah, that's fun. Or thorny coat. Apply thorns. I want. <laughs> I love stuff like that. Gain focus plus 30% damage. Well, okay. We're, we're going to take the harder fight. Just because I can. Alright, that's 8 damage to this dude. Okay. Let's do the thorns and the protect. I'm taking a little bit of damage on onto my warrior, I know that, but elite combats are supposed to hurt you a bit, as far as I know at least. And we're going to whip up the inspiration of the mage, because I do like the free regen we get there pretty cool okay so battle cry and well punishing let's go for some punishing on that dude all right 14 punish that's uh, pretty nifty let's go for that yeah, that's a lot of damage. I knew that would happen. That would work out pretty good. So now we're going to just use that regular Mind Bloom. Because I want to try out if I can do some good damage with my mage this time. So, well... Deal damage equal to focus is hard to pull off, gotta say. Okay. Well, this monster does intend to just debuff well we're, we're just going to smack it there he's a psy shot ah that's the skill i was looking for i knew that there must be another usage for focus energy release okay deal damage equal to focus stack onto the entire enemy party though yeah i want that aoe is always a good thing oh yeah regen room tasty you know what we're going to apply the regen rune to the battle cry here. This way, we'll get some nice reward there whenever we cast that spell. All right, arachnopuncture. Mm. Okay, so plus guard minus HP, plus HP minus the rest. So we're going to good put that onto the avatar of protection because I don't mind him losing some HP. Increasing his guard is 
pretty, pretty, pretty powerful in my humble opinion. There we go. Okay, some damage on my mage, some damage on my warrior. Hmm. <laughs> What's uh, preparations gonna do? Fortified units gain shield. And shield generator is generating defenses there. So we're going to try this. So the first turn I'm going to be very, very defensive there. My warrior does take damage, I'm pretty sure. So can't change that for now. Yeah. But now we gain a tremendous amounts of armor per turn. And that's what I wanted to see. So I'm again using the most of my boost points for the mage because I love the regen. It's just a good a good and nice effect to have. Simple, powerful, nothing to uh, nothing to sneeze at. So there's 10 damage incoming towards my fighter, 8 damage towards my tank. So I want to get rid of this dude here, because he's uh, basically the biggest issue here. So we're boosting that battle cry for more regen, like that. And we're going to attack that dude a bit. So we got more skill points left. Mind Bloom, why not? Some focus for our people. Deal 9 damage, that's all I need. Here we go. Yeah, I do like regenerating there. I'd say randomized value between 1 and 3. So the higher the regen, the higher the amount that I heal per turn, I assume. Okay, 18 damage for my warrior. And we see here, this thing is using its own boosting points this time. So we get it depicted here. So couldn't I... Couldn't I just destroy his uh, points there? Well, not really. Because I don't have the necessary uh, points there. Okay. So that's a terrible amount of damage. We're, we're just going to shield a, a warrior from that. And there's four damage on everybody, but that's not really an issue there. So we're, we're going to apply some punishment on this guy. Or later. For later usage. And skip that turn for now. If I have uh, not... Ah, okay. So first one was a piercing attack. Hmm. To... Uh, Check out these things a wee bit uh, more thoroughly. Okay, that's 40% uh, damage to everybody. Plus 40%, okay. Here we go. 12 damage to my tank. My god, my... My poor little uh, fighter is very, very roughed up there. All right, but maybe we can then also find out what happens if somebody loses all his HP. Maybe also not. All right, fighter level up. Slash. Okay, ah, critical. Next attack deals one extra damage per stack. Ah, okay, that's what critical does. I like that. Strength, brain, and weakness. Yeah, well, I'm going to take that. Okay, we're, we're not going to go for an elite fight here. Ah, there's another one of those. I want the rare rune! Wow, how unlucky. Dang. Okay, let's camp it out. And our party is healed by 15%. I don't know, these uh, campsites could be a wee bit stronger, I think. Okay, but let's go for the chapter boss. 130 HP. Wow. Quite a lot, isn't it? Okay. So, 5 damage on a lot of people. We're, we're going to go for the preparation skill. I like that one. This will trigger only next turn, but it does do so much for the entire party there. So, gain at shield gain to attack skill. So, we're going to... We're going to do this like that. This is also a way of reducing the incoming damage by just taking down an enemy. Shield amount is uh, there. We got it. 
Alright, that dude has thorns. Oh, sheesh. We're really, really low here. So, 7 damage on my mage, 10 damage on my tank. Nobody should have any issues with, with blocking that. Let's put up the regen, just to be sure that nobody will die here. There's thorns on this dude, so I gotta be careful there. Well, preparation slash gain defense and might. Mm, well, I'll rather trigger out thorns. So, thorny coat. Yeah, I want that on my tank here. Because I feel like that's a good thing to have. And, well, let's go for that mind bloom. Focus might be a good thing for later. So, oh, look at that. My game just crashed. Oh, too bad. Let's see if I can fix that. Well, turns out I get to restart that fight. Hmm. Not the worst thing to happen, but we also see here that the damage spread is now completely different. So there's a couple of extra damage points on my on my tank here, but beyond that, everybody else works different. The damage works differently now for everybody else. So we're going to use this time the preparation skill yet again because Fortify and Shield Generator is really good, because this also amps up the power of the Preparation Slash, which is pretty important, because right now... Wait a sec. Shouldn't my dude have the shield now? So, I don't know if that's working as intended, because I don't think that my enemy was supposed to get that shield. For me, that uh, doesn't seem like it's working as intended, but yeah, well, select the new leader. Whoopsie. So that was not what we uh, wanted to see. I can't also... I might just end my turn because we we just lost there, sadly, I guess. Okay, whoopsie. Okay. Yeah, so... I don't know if that's uh, if I misread there something or if that skill wasn't working as intended, but yeah, so far that's uh, it's a little bit sad, <laughs> but I don't mind there. I think uh, the the basics of that game are already well defined, and I must say I'm really really looking forward to where this game is headed because it does bring enough variance and it's uh, working here to make me interested in what it actually does but at the same time it is familiar enough to games that i've already played to not uh, weird me out or make it hard for me to get into a couple of things that so far really uh catched my eye were that it is that the focus stat from the mage is a little bit hard to play out and that i have the feeling as if the skills there are sometimes, for example, it was a little bit hard to see if the enemy was applying piercing damage to me or, or such things. But beyond that, everything is pretty well in place. I'd love to see if I can't... Uh, well, I have to check this out now before I, before I leave. Sorry to use that. I want to check out if I can assign somebody else as leader of the party beforehand because I want to know if that's a thing that I'm just that I just been too too stupid to see or if that's a functionality that still would be awesome if it could be added in but beyond that I already enjoy myself here a lot especially because it has a pretty challenging gameplay already on that uh, early stage of the game there's a lot of things you can do or or can't do whether depending on how you skill. The only thing regarding the boost point system that crossed my mind is <clears throat> that I felt like sometimes it is a little bit hard to weave those skills into one another. I'd be really happy if there would be more methods of gaining boost points. I know that this is a resource that has to be carefully, um, carefully balanced, well aware of that, but at the same time, I feel like as if 
the fact that I either regenerate a uh, boost point or spend one feels a little bit punishing, especially on characters like the mage here with a very low base attack skill. Not sure if I have misunderstood something about the gameplay so far, and that maybe that's the reason why it doesn't work out that well as I uh, as I would want it to. But yeah, I mean it's version 0.12. Well, let's not be uh, over exaggerating that. So far, I can say the art style is really neat, considering how how much of an early uh, early stage the game still is. And yeah. Totally can recommend it uh, so far gameplay-wise. I'd love to see more more lore and more background to these things. Probably a couple of extra characters which we can pick so we can decide for ourselves what kind of party we want to put up. But honestly, I'll always prefer a lower amount of uh, characters which are well-defined and well-working over, I don't know, eight different characters that are just uh, wonky and badly balanced between uh, uh, each other. All right, so that's pretty much it. I thank you guys extremely for watching. We're going to see where this game is going to hit, and I'm going to keep, you every, keep everybody posted about the developments there. So let's see. Yeah, no, there's sadly no method yet as I can see, to apply somebody or, or to make somebody a leader. Oh yeah, and uh, I really hope that items will be included here, like the relic system we get, we know from Slay the Spire, which gives us permanent bonuses. But beyond that, I really, really can't wait for the newer version. Drop your comments down below, let me know what you guys are thinking, and of course, leave a thumbs up to that video if you enjoyed. And last but not least, check out my channel. There's daily content popping up there, so you might want to check that out as well. Special thanks goes to the developer of this, uh, or the development studio behind this game, which uh, gave me a nudge towards it, because I really, really appreciate what you guys did there, and keep going. I can't wait for more. Bye-bye, everybody.